Hello and welcome to Zach103 TV and today we are back for the 2024 SMOS season. Uh, the CCS, Cars on Cup Series, will be going to Pocono for their season opener. Uh, hopefully uh, soon after I get this up. Uh, I actually haven't made the roster quite yet. I got all the paint schemes in, just got to upload them to the game, make sure the ratings are correct. And uh, other than that, uh, that's all I need to do for Cup and get that in. I haven't tested Pocono out either yet, either, but I have tested this. Everything's ready for Smos, uh, Daytona. We got 40 laps for the season opener this season, and we got a bunch of new faces, a lot of cars running, different paint schemes, and a little bit going. Silly season was interesting last year, but right now a Tufty Terror, uh, former Ronnie Racing driver, now on a backstretch uh, garage racing team, new racing team that formed up. We got a three-car cup operation. I believe don't. Um, I might be wrong, a oh, three-car uh, small operation as well, but we'll see if that's consistent or not. Like I said, he's starting pole. A 42 driver field. We got a full field today. Um, the series is full. Uh, everything's full the room of brim. We're ready to start the 2024 season. Daytona, like I said, a lot of new drivers, a lot of new faces. Uh, there's... We're going to come across those a lot during the race, but I do want to cover the new points format a little bit. So, we have, uh, if you lead a lap, you're no longer guaranteed a, a point for every lap led. It's now, if you lead a lap, or at least one lap, you'll get two points. Um, most laps led will not get this. Most laps led will still get their 10-point bonus, so will the pole sitter. So, Tufty Terror, currently with the points lead, um, with that pole, and, uh, and uh, we'll just, uh, since the uh, roster count in both series is the same. Uh, the point system in both series is also the same now. Um, the winner, I believe, will get, I believe, 45 or 50 points. Yeah, 50 points, and then second will get 42, and so on. If you DNF, you no longer won't get points. If you DNF, you will get a three-point deduction from where you finished based on that DNF. If you finish... Um, at a point where you would like lose points, like say you finish a certain point, I don't know, I didn't exactly do the math, but if you finish say last and you DNF'd, uh, didn't lead any laps or nothing, you would probably get at least one point um, at, at worst, but if like the system is like you get four points, you will still get that three point deduction, but if you get like three points from like the finishing position, that three-point deduction, you would still at least get one point. You're guaranteed one point out of every race, no matter what. So that's the current system we have right now. And I do believe that is fit. And again, no more lap for every point, uh, point for every lap led. It's just two points if you lead at least one lap. So it's not as OP. Also, no more playoffs. Um, full season standings. It builds up all the way down to, I think, in SMOS will be Atlanta will be our finale. In the CCS, it's looking to be Montreal, I believe. Uh, could be Coda as a backup. We'll see how that goes. Again, that's kind of a test to the waters thing. Cup will be going to Pocono as their season opener, not Daytona, but Daytona will be race two in Cup. And more so in Smos again, full season points. Next week, we're going to Auto Club. We got this, and next week's Auto Club will not be the short oval. It'll be the um, regular oval they've been running for the past however many years, the 2018 version, I believe, of the track. Also double check on that. But also, rating system is different. Um, we're now running the max on everything is 90, and the min on everything is 80. So there would be about a 10-point gap between the mix and man, the mix and the maximum, or the maximum and the minimum on everything. Pardon my cluts, cluts of words, I guess you could say. But So there's going to be a little bit more gaps between drivers during the season. I don't know if it's going to cause like one car to win however many races, but it becomes a, if it becomes a problem, we will fix it and go from there. And but other than that, we're going to come to command in about 10 seconds. I'm going to go to the cockpit again for this. We used to do that a little bit more in 2021, 22. Didn't do so much last year, but we're going to do it again here in about five seconds. Is on? The drivers, start your engines. Thank <laughs> you. 
40 laps here around Daytona. If they're, they should mostly be under green. Did the test, shouldn't be a wreck fest. But you know how my luck is with <laughs> getting these things right. Again, a lot of rookies, a lot of guys will look through throughout this field. We won't get through all of them today, but we'll go through some of them. Some guys going back from Cup down to the Small Series. I'm also going to be the only guy commentating this uh, for this one. We'll see, may, see more in the future. But pace cars in. Green flag in the air for the 2024 Smoth season. Tufty Terror takes it to the green. And Skyler Taylor, one of the rookies, going to be going up high there in second. And then Cooper with K&K &K Racing also on the bottom there. And like I said, with this points gap, we're going to see the racing be a little bit more different with the, rate, with the ratings change. So we're going to be seeing a little bit more realistic style of dominance, I guess you could say. But nothing, hopefully, too egregious throughout the, throughout the season. But race one this is a fresh start for the entire ratings. And all these drivers have a fresh start to everything here. We'll see how they do as Cooper in the 30. Looks to lead lap one of the 2024 season. He's got help from Alex Tanker in the 94. May surprise you, he did change numbers over the off season. Uh, used to be in the 85, changed to 94. Cooper leads lap one. A little bit three wide there with Craig Pockers in the middle. Jeremy Frey trying it up there as well. And Exo, the 32, he was a cup regular the past two seasons. He's back down to the Samos, trying to bring back some dominance here. His performance in the cup was not as much as he was hoping, so he moved down to Samos to try to get something going. But that top lane on the back stretch seems to be very successful for Cooper in the 30 car. Some of these guys are going to be careful not to go four wide in the back. We see Skylar Taylor and Zig Zagoon in the 06. Zig Zagoon going to Ford along with Salamander Incorporated. Got Brenda Gonzalez as well there on the bottom. Again, Skylar Taylor looks like going to be left out to dry. The rookie still hasn't quite found their friends yet in this league. Again, Daytona, season opener, a lot can happen. It's like Nimrod in the 29, new Wick, uh, Wick Rare Racing car. I think underneath that is Exo going to take it three wide for a second with Dodge Motorsports Team Incorporated, I believe is the correct name of that team. And that's going to leave Alex Tanker out to dry. Maybe um, Caden Williams there in the middle. Depending on how that fizzles out, looks like Nimrod's going to take that top lane lead. Is Cooper very well handling this field right now? Kind of taking control of the field. Um... Blocking the lanes he feels he needs to. Leading a lot of laps here. I think he's led every lap so far. Start to see a little bit of breakaway. Exo's got a big run here on the back stretch. See if he goes anything with it. Does this Tufty Terror follow the pole sitter? He does. That's going to put Cooper up on the outside lane now. And Exo in the 32. 2022... Uh, Zekron 3TV 400 winner, as he's going to go block that top lane. Might not have been the smartest move, and Nimrod gave a big draft to Tufty Terror or Pulse Sitter there at the bottom. Tufty Terror uh, joining that backstretch um, garage team uh, racing. I hope I said that right for this season. Got Nimrod on the bottom. Craig Pockrass may take it three wide. I don't think he's got the room, but Nimrod able to hold it low. Get real close to Tough to Terror. She seems to be drafting a little bit better than some of these guys. The gap's a little bit more. Lowered the aggression some. Maybe a little more than I should have, but... That's what we have. And Tough to Terror now leading some laps here. Again, um, most laps led, and just uh, leading laps is really what's going to get you points. And finishing position is everything, of course, but... Those are really the bonus points now at this point. Nimrod for Wick Rare Racing uh, is going to go to the top here and take the lead. Had a really good run there off a of two. Got Craig Pockers now. He's going to try to go dive low, take this position his way. Rent Nimrod from leading a lap, try to get that two-point bonus on his part. Looks like we got three wide back there with Alex Tanker, and I believe that was uh, Br Byron Webb, or no, uh, Zigzagoon, not uh, Brian Webb. As Craig Pockers is going to lead the lap. For Roach Rare Yee Racing. They had an operation going where they might have ended up being teammates. Manufacturers uh, Dodge wanted to stay with Roach Rare Yee Racing, so that ended up happening. We got Brock Nelson here. 
Um, I believe he made the championship four last season. Don't snooze on him. He's got a new team as well. I believe he joined... I don't quite recall what team he did join, but he did join a new team. So he's going to take it three wide for the lead. Nimrod didn't quite get the run there. We got three wide for the lead now. Brock Nelson in the 51 is going to take it here. And he got no Clifton. He got tight off the corner. He's going to try to get that run on the top with Nimrod, but Cl oh, almost spun himself out. Was not clear for the block. May have got the one a little loose, though. Try to get that run. Try to dive down there again here on turn one. Let's see what happens. But no, Clifton has the edge in the one car for uh, Wild Wolf Motorsports. His second season in the one car. Last season was pretty poor, I'm going to be honest, but this year he's going to try to do a little better. He gets ahead of Brock Nelson. Got Brandon Nelson right next to Brock Nelson. I don't believe they're related. Nelson's a very common last name. And that number, Mountain Dew number five. He was also in the Cup Series. Won at Watkins Glen in 2021 in the Cup Series. Uh, I don't know. Hasn't done much. Made the championship four in the CCS last season. Decided to move down to Smosa so Track House Racing. He's got some associations with the team owner. Track Houses. He used to be, uh, used to, roles used to be flipped. He used to be the team owner of uh, Reggie Vogelman, but... Uh, that's the situation now. He's got Pox Cozart in the 21 now in third. Defending Daytona winner for Smoss uh, in in the you know season opener anyway. He did not win. He did he did got a, he did get a top 10 last time he raced here. So definitely do not snooze on Pox. Same team, same same car, same sponsors. He's back and uh, maybe he's better than ever. We'll see. And Cactus King uh, first race. In any of the two divisions since 2022, I believe, uh, had some issues then. He's come back up from that. He's doing. Uh, he, uh, we'll see if he does better. Uh, he's also going to be making his first Cup race since as well. Um, and Pocono, so he's going to be running the same sponsor scheme, uh, running his own team, uh, Cactus Racing Enterprises. Was going to have Patrick Miller uh, running Smos with him, but it looks like Patrick Miller made it to the Cup Series. So I had to make a move to the Cup Series. Was able to successfully make it through the signups. So Patrick Miller in the Cup Series now, the number 10. Um, Cactus Racing Enterprises Advent Health car. You'll see at Pocono. Brandon Nelson to the lead. Uh, he's going to try to lead some laps here. Again, Mountain Dew. The uh, new um, car logo, I guess. If I worded that right. But we're uh, past 11 laps in now. So far, these guys are just trying to manage where to be and timing and everything. It's going to be interesting to see 40 laps. I don't believe they'll have green flag stops. Or even stops for that matter. But long race, a lot can happen. And uh, Jazz 500, I think, will be 50 laps again. I may do a little bit longer. No, go ahead. If y'all want a, if y'all want a longer Jazz 500 this year, like 60 laps or 70, uh, type in the comments. Let me know below. Brandon Nelson appearing to take charge of the field now at this point. Brock Nelson not quite having the draft at that point. Cactus King moving up knows that lane's a little bit quicker. Um, Cooper going to take a three wide with Eric Monaco for fourth. We got Thunder 24 fan in the 83. We got two Red Bull cars in this field. Likewise to uh, last season, I believe, at some points. They have a brief tenure with Middle Road Energy, but that did not stick for 2024 with Thunder 24 fan. So currently running the 83 Red Bull car. And it looks like Cooper again. He wants back up here. He, took, he led the first four laps of this race. He's going to try to come back up here, get most laps led. He is the early contender. I would say he's an early pick to the win. Um, don't snooze on him by no means. And then Cactus King's looking. Looks like he's going to get left up there. Hopefully he doesn't get passed by too many on his part and fall back. It looks like Cooper may have gotten a little loose. Maybe a little bumper grab or something from the 48. Went a little bit lower off entry. Or no, maybe he's making a move down to the lead. Five car did not get that much of a run off of the corner with that 30 car not pushing him down the straight. So he's going to be a little bit slower. That might just be enough for the 30 to get ahead, but he's got the 48 behind him. Teammates, the 48 and the 5. Lap led does go to Brandon Nelson again. So the teamwork uh, on the top between Eric Monaco and Brandon Nelson are successful. Let's see how that goes without the race. Uh, looks like that 5 car may have, that 48 car may have gotten tight on entry. Same with Craig Pockers. Pox Cruz aren't making a move there in the middle of the pack. Because in Archer 3, you're not going to see the whole pack. I don't, I'm not going to turn on all the cars, but you get the gist. 
Still side by side for the lead, relatively uh, neck and neck at this point. Cooper trying to get another lap led, but so is Brandon Nelson. These two are probably going to be the ones battling for most laps led at this point in the race. Not quite halfway yet, though. A lot can happen. Cooper's going to take that lap. Again, that teamwork on the high side between the 48 and the 5 is working fairly well. Oh, it looks like Thunder 24 fan may have had a little bit too high of an entry. 5 car does not go up to the 48. 48 is probably going to get left to dry here. He's got some help from Cactus King and Craig Pockers in the back. Cooper, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. And we got Sam Oskin in the 57 as well. Going to be a factor. And he's, oh, almost went three wide. Cooper was successful in blocking. Uh, Brandon Nelson doesn't have a lot of help, though. The 83, he's still trying to get some speed going after he moved that uh, 48, or the 48 spooked him, or I can't remember how, or he spooked, the, something happened there. It caused some spookiness, and they got a little shaken up turn one that last time around. But Sam Oskin taking control on the bottom, but Cooper taking control of the field. Him and Brandon Nelson so far have been the two cars to watch in that department. They've been very successful controlling this field so far. Again, this new package with the new aggression levels allows for a little bit more skill, uh, these drivers to show, um, in a way. Again, just Khan down the bottom. Do not sleep on him. He has been very consistent the past two seasons. Uh... Pretty much to solidified himself as a uh, Smos regular. He's made a few cup starts as well. Uh, always running that, um, I guess at this point, iconic number 37. He's running every season he's ran. You see that uh, YouTube logo on the hood or something like that. You know it's Genghis Khan. He's coming up here. He's going to try to take second away. You got Matthew Hill right behind him. Matthew Hill also running the same pace scheme he ran. He's been running or uh, since the beginning as well. Uh, also got his first career win last season at... Um, Home State, uh, Homestead, Miami. That 90 car for Matthew Hill. And Matthew Hill Racing. You got Melinda Jones as well back there. 2022 playoff contender. Didn't show a lot last season, but was shaking big move back to Chevy. Going to try to come back up here and work with their teammate in the 37. But nonetheless, again, Cooper still controlling the field very well. That bottom line not quite organizing as well at this point. Um... We we're talking about Wick Ra or Wick Rare Racing Nimrod. We've got Quadruped coming up here now in the 23 for Wick Rare Racing as well. And then you got Eden Styles Wild Wolf Motorsports and uh, Kyle Sustre with Trek House Wild Wolf and uh, Trek House are, uh, I believe, uh, association or were in association. I do believe they did cut ties over the off season, however. And Quadruped 2022 Smosh Champion. Making some noise up here. Coming up to second place. On the move around again, just con. Uh, Matthew Hill also going to that middle line. Ian Styles taking a little bit higher entry. Trying to get some more uh, rotation. Get a better draft off the corner here. Potentially for turn two. See if he does anything behind this 23. It looks like the leaders kind of took the bottom a little bit more. Just like I was saying, 45 was going to try the bottom. He was thinking the nine might have helped him. Did not happen. However, he does have a run on that 23. Nonetheless... Iron car goes high, Cooper stays low, and uh, this allows Ryan Little on the 27 to come up. Ryan Little did make one start last season, I believe it was Pocono. Don't hold me to that though. Um, for uh, number 77, when he made a start last season, he's down the 27. We'll see if he runs full time this year or not. Three wide for second, Kyler Sustray in the nine. Captain Consistency, he got that nickname last season after a six race top 10 streak in just his first six races. Was definitely a playoff contender, and uh, unfortunately didn't have a good second half of the season, but he is definitely one to watch here in Smos. And the next is at number nine for Track House. He did join that team over the off season. He's got a good run on Cooper here. He might be able to make a move. Cooper has definitely been the dominant car by a long stretch. Size to help. I don't know about that. Yeah, but this 30 car has definitely had control of the field very well over this race. Got uh, Caden Williams in the 25 going to go low. He hasn't made really a lot of noise in either series, but is stuck with Salamander Inc. the past three seasons, or this being his third season with the team. Rain and Cup, Ryan and uh, Smoss last season, and uh, he's going to run Smoss again this season. He's going to try to get underneath the 9 car here. He thinks he can get around that uh, 30, or he might, uh, that 9 car definitely had a run to get around the 30 car, just decided against it. Um... I don't know. 
Not sure why. And then you got the 98 of Alex. I'm gonna have to get used to some of these names, some of these new one names specifically. As we are now past halfway, the 30 car has definitely shown to be the dominant car at this point. Has been able to control the field very well, controlling the lanes. They're definitely one to watch. Now, I think that is contributor to the new points package. It allows a little more dominance of the field because of the gaps in the ratings. You got a 10 point gap. You're not always going 100%. It looks like the 98 is going to help the 25 here. Oh, they're going to go three wide for the lead. Alex Sinvidel is going to go for the lead. Three wide against Cooper. Went underneath Caden Williams. And Cooper is going to get left to dry here. As Alex Sinvidel is going to try to lead his first lap of his career on lap 23. Or lap. I don't, I don't know. Coming to lap 23. Ready for second is Cooper's going to. I don't know if he's going to start falling back because this car in the middle area is going to start falling back. As Jimmy Starr got moved up, or uh, has made his way into third on the bottom line, may have moved up to nine. Kidden Williams trying to make some noise there on the top. 98's got the run off the corner. Ian Styles in the middle, Jimmy Starr on the bottom. I don't believe Jimmy's going to come up and take three wide for second. He's going to keep it three wide for third, however. Matthew Hill third. Uh, on the third lane, or second on the third lane. There's only two cars in the third lane I'm seeing up here. Maybe some in the back I'm not seeing, but... Or can't see because of the game. I'll decide not to overpower my PC and kill it because of the game. But again, another one of the rookies running for Wood Brothers Racing. The number 98 Fire Emblem Toyota. Leading here. Leading the first laps. Again, we see these rookies. It's going to be interesting ones to watch all season. Uh... Something to keep an eye out. Ian Styles going low. I don't think he's got any help, but he does have that underneath his 98. And we've seen entry of this corner. Cars are going to tend to go. Yep, just like that. Riley Gore, Skaden Williams go low. And just like that, he's it's only him and Jimmy Starr on the top. They are teammates. Uh, Wood Brothers Racing teammates. Uh, so they might get the run off the corner. With Ian, or, nope, looks like Ian Styles is going to be able to get the run. That was close. I think Ian Styles got it. Yeah, Ian Styles got it. That lap. Again, that top run not quite working. Kyler Sustre trying to make it work. See if Ian Styles can get a run off the corner. I think the 98's still going to be side by side with him off the corner. Well, no. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. And that's going to give that top run. It's going to helicopter cam. Getting a good idea of how that run works here. Is it looks like Caden Williams is going to go um, three wide there for second. That will help the 98 keep the lead potentially. But the 19 also got moved up with the way that placement. And that just the bottom line's a little bit more. Uh, Gets a little bit around the track better. He doesn't have draft now, so that 45 is going to get that run. But it looks like 98 has that little bit of run on the tribal. It's going to be close. I think the... Yeah, 98 got it. So that's another lap to his book. The three wide for the lead, potentially, with the 25. And Caden Williams going three wide in turn one. Caden Williams won, I believe, his last win came in 2022 at Talladega in the CCS. He also, I uh, believe he won at Orlando in CCS in 2021. So it's got actually pretty good at plate races. I guess I didn't really think about that, but his strong suit, plate races. He's going to lead a lap here, it looks like. A little bit, almost four wide there. This guy's got to be careful. we got Marco Leonard, tough to tear a pulse sitter. And Jeff Squid there in second. Haven't talked about him yet. Moved down from CCS as well. Moved down to Smos. Trying to get better performance. Won Zach going through to be 400 last season. Um... Uh, Wanted to get more here in Smos. Maybe he can. We'll see. I'm gonna try to lead his first lap in Smos. Oh, nice block of that 25. Gets just around him. Is able to block. Get that run on top. That 93 has a huge run down the straight with a 66 of Marker Leonard. They got Azrael Dreamer down there as well. See what happens here. Leads his lap. Chef Squid could use that two-point bonus. But I know it's early in the season, but, you know, uh, you can lose a championship in, the race, in race one. Or, well, race, you could you lose a championship by, like, two points. So, who knows? I uh, believe uh, Tufty Terror did get that lap. Again, that battle for most laps led, I think, is also interesting right now as well. Right now, I think the 30, I think, just from what I've seen, the 30 is leading that. And then the 5, I think the 93 would also be the other car as well. But don't hold me to that. And Chef Squid didn't try to get that run down the block. He had a really nice run off the corner with help from Caden Williams. He may get enough here to lead the lap, but it looks like that bottom run is actually going to run here. Well, no. No, I'm mistaken. 93 checked up a little bit off the corner. Might have got loose. Chef Squid's going to lead that lap and get that two-point bonus for leading at least a lap. 
Again, no point for every lap led any longer. That point has that rule has been extinguished. And so far, I believe all cars are still in the race. Yeah, Nimrod currently last running car. I know that's surprising, but the way this field is, a lot of competition, a lot can happen. Coming to tend to go here in a couple laps. So far, a long race. Uh, the regression is there for sure. She's not. They're not getting too crazy close to each other. And that's not bad. Racing's good. Not a lot of wrecks. I, 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 we, may, we may go caution free. It's looking pretty likely at this point. Jeff Squid still holding the lead. More three wide in the back. Brian Webb, the 17 for uh, Railfan Motorsports, up there and fourth on the bottom lane. And David Don in the six. Well, is Tufty Terror going to go for the move on the bottoms? And Brian Webb follows. Looks like this is going to be a pass here for the lead. Got David Don as well on the bottom. He's going to start coming up and try to get some draft here. Another one of them rookies making their debut. Um, tough to get a little bit a little bit tight there, but he's only able to, be able to lead this lap. These two have been neck and neck so far these past couple laps. Past few laps, I'd rather say. We are now 10 laps to go in this race. We got David Don, it looks like Pace and Avery, the two Go Forth Motorsports teammates, making their debut uh, here in Smos. 91 in the 6. Got Noah Clifton in between them. The two DeWalt cars are right next to each other. Noah Clifton and Brian Webb. It looks like David Don takes the lead here. Uh, I, I didn't even pay attention. I was paying attention to just them being together, but it looks like David Don taking the lead. He got quickly get ahead of Shift Squid and very quickly manage those lanes. Very aggressive driving for a rookie, making very uh, interesting uh, way to make your first start. Where, there he goes, following that one car down the track, make sure he keeps that lead. We'll see if they can get a run here on him. It looks like that one car I think is going to get the run here. I could be wrong, but I believe he's going to get the run. Okay, he's got teammate Pace and Avery. Avery's going to go stay top with him, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The one car is probably going to be able to get underneath him here with that run he still has. And that 91 was quite close enough to him to get that run. But the 91, Pace and Avery stays high with David Don. Try to get those... Two teammates up front. Get David Don lead another lap here. Is that one car doesn't quite have the draft. Uh, yeah, I think David Don's going to get it this time around. But no cliff none on the bottom. Uh, car behind him is not a teammate. She can bake car of the 27 and Ryan Little. It's a three-car team this year. Usually it's just Gingis Khan and Melinda Jones, but uh, Ryan Little added to the roster this season. Again, those two cars in the top are cooking. The 93 Tough to Terror. Ford manufacturer team may, may do something. Uh, Backstreet's Garage Racing Team is Tufty's official team, but Ford Alliance may be interesting on the top, but Chevy's on the bottom. That top line doesn't seem to be as strong at this point right now. The 93 doesn't quite look as strong. Still holding on. No, Clifton trying to go outside. Ryan Little follows, but I think 32 may try it. Nope, 32. I don't think he quite. I don't think Exo quite had the run he needed, but I think they went high, went into the corner deep, give him just enough run to clear those guys in the top. They got Chevy leading on both lanes. And it looks like Exo may go three wide for third, but I don't think he's got. Well, looks like he does. Uh, it's gonna be close. Yeah, 27 is gonna give him some room. Unfortunately, it may cost 27 the race. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to come back. But no Clifton currently leading. Hasn't made really, be honest, uh, hasn't made any noise to any tracks other than plate tracks. And I think at some he made some random appearances at ovals. But we'll see how he does this year. He may have improved. He may have improved. And Exo uh, definitely showing uh, they're still good right here in second. I know this is Daytona a lot. More so, um, oh, wow. Two Dodge cars going low. Oh wow, they're going three wide in turn one or turn three for the lead. They are 46. They they looked like he was going to help them, uh, Dodge teammates, but it looks like Craig's looking for a little more than just helping his teammate. Oh, almost four wide off the corner, 32 able to clear the one. Brock Nelson and Batanha on the 71. Batanha, I don't believe has a win, but he did get one top five last year. Uh, had a horrible season. Almost won at Indianapolis, had engine issues. 
uh, was not success. I think he was successful maybe in one or two top fives very late in the season last year. I could be wrong. You'd have to check the standings. But three wide for the lead. I think they're level. Let me check the helicopter cam to make sure. Almost. 32 has a run, but he doesn't have any help. So the 46 is probably going to close that gap. 71 is going to be able to take it away. The Don Patrol Motorsports number 71. Got um, Sammy Oskin in the 57 PS Motorsports Coca-Cola car. And it looks like pit stops are happening for some of the cars in the back. So... This ain't over yet. This just got interesting. We may see some green flag pit stops. Now, the question is, can they say green while pitting under, uh, while pitting? So, the 29 of Nimrod, the 24 Angie Johnson, and uh, 20, uh, last year's winner, 21 of Pox Coast, are pitting early. I don't to be honest, I think they're the only pitters right now. We have, might have some guys try to stick this one out. Might have been saving fuel in the pack. I forgot who was leading. I think it's the... Uh, let me just go to a random car. This may have split up the field. 71 Batatna. Let's go back to the cars in front. Do we have any more cars pitting? We do. I think at this point, we may have some guys saving enough gas to make it. Some might not. This changes everything. I did not think we were going to have green flag pit stops, but here we are. We have two packs now. It just became a fuel mileage race. Or it might have been a fuel mileage race the whole time. I just didn't know. Looks like everyone getting their pit stalls, getting them cleanly, I think, believe. But right now, we may have, may have, had enough cars save fuel uh, behind traffic. So if you were leading laps, you might not be in the catbird seat. But we'll see how many pit here, if any. Noah Clifton and David Don going to pit road. Looks like we have a seven-car pack staying out. And they're staying single file. Very wise move at the moment. However... Come with the white flag next time by. I don't know if they'll have enough fuel or enough to make it to the end. Genji's con. He's going to go low here. On uh, Craig Packers and uh, Exo. Brock Nelson kind of in the catbird seat right now. Doesn't have enough fuel to make it to the end. Got some cars about to go lap down here at this point. We may have some conflictions. These cars have to come to code pit road. And there's these cars coming out of pit road. They got to be careful, especially being three wide right now. It's going to be a rough situation if there's cars in front, but I think those other cars will be able to pull away enough before we exit turn four. That'll be correct. Do we have any pitters here? No, they still stay out. That pack in the back is still cooking. It's also clogged up a little bit by cars that already pit. Lap cars are going to be an issue here. One lap to go here at NCCRS Daytona, or uh, I forgot, it's it Smos Daytona. It looks like Craig Pockers in the lead right now. Does he have enough fuel to make it to the end? Does he draft with the 58? I think the 32 is out of gas. Do they have enough gas to make it to the end? I just realized they're going like 220 down the street. So that's insane. Yeah, 32 exo is out of gas. Craig Pockers out of gas. Coming out the final corner. Does everyone have enough gas to make it? He does have enough gas. No one else has enough. But Craig Pockers... Barely was you can see him slowing down off a of four, but Craig Pockers extended that fuel tank, ran out pretty much right at the exit of four, but so did everyone else behind him, and wins Smos Daytona. What a way to end it! Exo, I believe, got second. A lot of cars on the apron that could not finish due to their fuel concerns, but a lot of cars are coming out of this with a really good finish. Um, again, just con. Sixth, uh, you can see the standings a little bit there, but Craig Pockers wins his first career race for Roach Racing after all of his teammates last year had at least one win, and he's going to open up this season with a win himself. What a way to end it. Did not think they'd have fuel strap, but hey, they always surprise me. But like I said, next week, or next next race in Smos, or yeah, Smos is Auto Club, and CCS will be going to Pocono. Hopefully I get that organized within the week of this being uploaded. Anyways, thanks for watching. We may have some commentators in the booth actually next race. We'll see what they're doing. Uh, they are busy. I think they were busy this time when I commentated. But uh, nonetheless, good race. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Congratulations to Craig Pockers on his first career small swim.